Good afternoon everyone. Today I am going to be hopefully completing the Measures Quilty Pillow Top. And hi, my name is Kathy. Welcome to my hobby home. Um, if you watched any of my previous videos, you did see where I was having trouble getting um, a diagram or there wasn't a diagram in the pattern that it called for. I did receive it. This is what they sent to me, um, which really isn't any instructions to me. But we are going to try. And let me show you. Um, this is the July 2023 Measures Quilty box that I received. I do want to reiterate, Measures Quilty does not have the best fabric. Um, but it is good fabric. If you're just doing a wall hanger or a pillow, it's real thick fabric. Um, and also, I want to show you on this diagram, they gave me notice the colors here were colors that were in their box. Their pieces that come in their box are not big enough to do the back of the pillow. So you will have to purchase your own back and it did say that you know i'm just saying maybe they just used their their fabrics for reference um in their booklet here it does say three 21 inch square muslins pieces for lining then you needed three 21 inch square batting now this that is because what they provide does create three pillows i'm doing one i'm not doing three um, then you need three 18 inch square pillow forms. I do have an 18 inch square pillow form. And the one thing that they did not say, they said you need three yards of fabric for the pillow back. But what you actually need for each pillow back is two 18 and a half by 23 rectangles. So maybe a yard, I don't know. I didn't figure that out because, but they don't tell you that. And I will tell you, this is the third time I'm trying to record this video because the first time I was having issues with one thing. The second time I realized, hey, I didn't have that second piece. But I do want to show you, I know I'm reaching out something that um a tool that i use that really helps me cutting my fabric and i'm sorry if you see my mess back there that's a crafting shelf it has let's see jelly rolls bins with charm packs um i do know there's a layer cake up in there it's all my fabric stuff right there i have more fabric on a shelf back here but down here on the bottom that's a lot of paper craft stuff i don't do a lot of paper crafts anymore i do like to enjoy i do enjoy it but this right here i'm going to just show you here but that trying to get it to where it doesn't glare see that this and i love this handle um this is a fist scars i don't know what they called it but it is a six and a half by 24 inch um, ruler that this will cut you press down on it and run it across it and it cuts your fabric i love it especially when i have uh, remnants i can cut these pieces into um you know little squares for if let me see i think the smallest you can go on this it may be I don't think it's one inch no it's not one inch it's like almost one and a half inches or maybe one and a quarter inches the smallest well i don't know you'd like to measure it i like i i don't do nothing smaller than one and a half inch because i don't want any one inch stashes so what i am going to do oh and i, I don't know if i showed you my finish this is my finished Quilt. Let me back you up here. Pillow top. And it's trimmed. I used that same tool to trim it so that the edges were even. 
and but right now let's just get into this and see if we can figure this pillow thing out i don't know because i don't feel like i have enough instructions still so in just a second i will have you turned around where you will be watching me try this okay and here we go we have our diagram i'm gonna lay that over here to the side then we have our instructions here that we are going to try to follow and then we have our pillow top over here i hope i have everything together just saying and i believe everything is still on a quarter inch making sure i have my machine set at 6.5 because at 6.5 if i go along the edge of that foot it is a quarter of an inch and i hope you guys can hear me well i've been having sound difficulties in the first two videos actually there was no sound whatsoever so uh i hope there is sound with this one and i'm using a mic but i was trying to do direct link and that don't work you have to do the little receiver thing and i'm i'm showing i'm on i think yeah i hope i am because i'm not doing this again okay so it says to with the wrong side inside fold each pillow back 18 and a half by 23 rectangle in half to form two double thick 18 and a half by 11 and a half i don't have a front i don't have a back i have a piece of fabric that's the same on both sides so we don't have that to worry about it says overlap folded edges of double thick rectangles about four inch four inches to make an 18 and a half inch square okay so for me to know that i have an 18 and a half inch square i'm going to have to push my machine back just a bit so just give me a second okay so i've laid my fabric on my board here over here on the end that you can't see i'm on the one one mark and then over here on this other end i'm on the 18 and a half inch mark I'm on the 18 and a half inch mark over here. I used my clips and clipped those together. So now I'm going to pull my machine back. We are going to figure this out. So just hang in there with me. We're going to be doing a lot of moving and grooving here. Well, no grooving. We can't have my, uh, music on here because it may be a copyright issue. We don't want copyright issues. So just hang with me. Okay, and here we are with the machine all set up we've got our fabric here we've got our little i think these are called wonder clips i can't remember but they are wonderful they are truly great for me because i do not poke myself as much as i used to so it says layer pillow top and back with right sides together join with quarter inch seam all right so i may need to get some more of my wonder clips out i don't have that many because i got another project that i'm using them on y'all will see that project too but i do have a handful of them so let's take our square here and i don't guess it really matters so it's with right sides together yes and notice this right here we've got two this is where our double layer we have our rough edge here we have our folded ends right here so i am going to start i hope you can see this i will turn it like this so we have our raw edge against our pillow back here our pillow top so i am going to go ahead and clip both ends it makes it a little difficult when you've got those clips in the middle that's making it heavy for you i hope you can see me i try to remember you guys are over my right shoulder and not right here under me so 
and then we are going to turn this direction I think maybe what I need to do is clip these get this paper out of the way before I go knocking it loose I'm going to go on and clip that one together right there and just for the time being I'm going to push the machine back to make sure we get this clipped nicely I'm going to put that clip there and I'm going to be down here on the end where you can't see me and this does overhang just a little bit but I'm I tell you what we have to do we have to make those edges match up because you need that little extra bit to um, for the filling okay I can't get that to go on there there it goes so I'm gonna try to uh, stretch that out just a wee bit there And I'm doing this from the back so I can make sure that the um, the edges are matching. I'm guessing that my pillow is not an 18 and a half by 18 and a half and I think it's supposed to be but it must not be let me let me do a, a quick measure here because when I sew nothing ever comes out the size it's supposed to be and I don't know why I'm, I'm a bad cut It looks like it is 18 and a half. Uh, not quite 18 and a half. But the, we'll make it work. I don't care. We're doing a quarter, so that's going to take it down. Yeah, the pillow may not fit in. But <laughs> that'll be okay, too. We're not going to worry about it. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to um, make that just fit. We are just going to, it is what it is, and we'll sew it from the, the um, pillow side. I have both sides attached. Well, I can unattach that one and attach it. I know, I make things just fit and work, you know, even if they're not working. I mean, honestly, it's okay with me if it's not. I think that will make a, a pluffier pillow. I like my pillows to be full. I don't like them to look like they've been used for 10 years and they're flat as a fritter. I like my pillows to be good and tight. So that is done. That's done. So yeah, we've got a lot of extra fabric there. Oh, that just goes to show, you know, I'm not a perfect sewer. I'm over here trying to uh, still clip this all. I may have to trim this fabric. I may just wait and trim it after the fact but okay here we are we have this clipped now it is not perfect but who is and what is I, I don't you know it doesn't bother me that it's not perfectly done 
Now, if I was doing something for somebody else, yeah, that this would be a problem. But if the pillow fits, why is it going to matter? And I will say, these pillows that I got, um, I got them off of Amazon. They're not the fullest things. They were shrink-wrapped. And when I say shrink-wrapped, I mean vacuum-sealed shrink-wrapped. So, it, I mean, it could just be that they're still trying to pluff up, but I don't think so. So, let's get us on the sewing machine here. I, I normally have this little guide on there for my quarter of an inch but since i have these overhangs i'm not gonna do that i'm just gonna pull it up and i'm gonna hit it on the machine and we gonna put a hem on this or a same i keep saying hems because i'm used to sewing clothes and i'm having to put my my legs on my my machine out because when I move it around, my legs close up. But anyway, I am used to sewing clothing and not quilting. So I may refer to a lot of things as hems. It's not a hem. It is a seam. A hem is what you have in the bottom of your pants. So putting our foot down, our needle down, I'm doing some back stitches there and I am going to sew this slow and easy so we are let's see we need to definitely have a quarter of an inch here I'm sure it's a quarter of an inch and I'm fo just following the edge of my foot here let me move my little garbage pail over here that's my garbage pail if y'all um, have watched any of my other videos you know that that's my little garbage pail there i keep <laughs> i put all my my strings and fabric pieces in that i do have a garbage can down here under the edge of me but a lot of times when i'm doing this i just oh this is thick and it's trying to pull to the side we don't like that so it means I'm going to have to get my arms up in here, probably in your way for sure. I'm going to have to make sure it stays over. I don't know why. I probably could put my, my walking foot on here, but I really don't want to use that walking foot on this. Maybe if I turn my fabric that direction... Okay, now this is where one of our side seams is. That's our opening, I mean, for the pillow. Now I'm staying here on this quarter of an inch, even though it's, it's not wanting to. That's the thing when you use um, thicker fabrics and you've got batting and all that, that does add a thickness and you probably need to use a walking foot. I have, I have two walking feet. I don't know why I didn't get, think to go in and put one on here. But honestly, well, yeah, I do. I didn't think it was going to be this thick to require that. Let me... I'm just taking that off and I'm going to flatten this out here. And we're going to just... And I'm just going to run off the edge there. Because I am going to turn it to do the other side. I'm not going to try to squeeze it around and I'm not doing that. I, I will cut my thread and I will come back and I will pick it up. Put my presser foot down again. We're on that edge. We're going to back stitch. I like to back stitch until I know. And 
and now that I have that first side done my fabric will kind of well it will lay a lot better I am going to pin this side to make sure though that it's not pulling the fabric now notice I've rolled this up that just makes it easier instead of having it hanging down in my lap I have it right here on the machine and I can move it around a lot easier and yeah I know you see I'm going slow which is fine I think I've said it before I'm not up running a marathon which I would never do that but um, I'm gonna get my stiletto because some of my side of my quilt or my muslin is kind of curled up there and I don't want it to get caught up in the and yeah this, I like this foot because it's got this little plastic guard on it I don't know if it's just a brother thing or if all machines have that they probably all have it but I really like it because it's got that guard there and it keeps me like using my stiletto I don't run up on top of my stiletto okay so I'm gonna come I'm changing how my roll goes so And one thing about this I will say is when you're doing this I have a feeling my top piece is going to be um, longer than the piece the backing piece because when you're sewing with a thickness like this it seems to push it out and I you know there's a lot of things I didn't think about when doing this and if I had thought about it, I would have left a little bit extra, you know, fabric over here. Like maybe a quarter of an inch because, see, I, I just pulled, yeah, it's going to leave a little difference. But it will be okay. It'll still catch under that quarter of an inch seam or, yeah, seam allowance. It'll catch in that. sometimes you have to move your whole piece to and I'm just gonna say all the way off the edge and I'll tell you right here in the corners that also provides um, I don't know stability durability you know it's kind of like a safety net that it's not going to come undone you know it's well technically it is back stitching you know you're double stitching over a location just to provide strength there and now that I have that strength in that corner I'm not worried about it you know losing let's see yeah this oh that's what's happening I was wondering why my fabric was pulling and it's because it got caught on the corner here the the opening got caught on the corner there <laughs> so yeah make sure I mean you have to make sure what's going on under your machine you know under the fabric as well as what's going on on the top of your fabric because that underneath affects it just as much so I'm going to sew as close to my clip as I can. And I'm going to hold this down really tight because that is where the fabrics overlay one another and I don't want one piece to crinkle up like that because that would not be very pretty. Okay, and this is the other side, other piece of fabric here. Let's see. Yeah, and that's where the top piece overlaps, the bottom piece. But that one will be okay to go on and move that clip out of the way. 
because it's not at risk of rolling up. I'm going to go on and unclip this and I'm going to try to keep my my seam going straight okay got that done and I want to go on and clip out some of these extra strings here it just makes it prettier when you're done and I, I will show you I'm gonna show you something your fabric is going to have little frays I've never been able to sew without having fraying I don't know maybe it's just me I don't know but I've never been able to say where I did not have fraying let's just leave it at that <laughs> my stuff always frays And I'm doing my back stitching all the way to that back corner. And I'm wondering here. Gonna go on and get that clip out of my way. I don't know if you could see the foot there, but it definitely did a jig over to the side real good. And sometimes you can just let the sewing machine just pull your fabric through. And other times you have to guide it yourself. You can't trust your machine, especially when it's got a thickness like this. You can't trust your machine to do what it needs to do. You have to I'm not going to say force it because you don't ever force your sewing machine to do something. That's when you break a needle. And we do not want to break a needle at all. Okay, I'm going to pull that. I'm getting right here to the very end I don't know if I've asked y'all today how's your weather doing we're at 101 again today aren't you glad you're not in Louisiana and if you are I'm sorry I think Arkansas and Mississippi is the same way here I mean we have quite a few places that's that I when I looked at the uh, my weather app earlier before I jumped on uh, Oh, uh, several places on the radar were showing you know 100 degree temps and check your puppies check your elderly check your, your kitty cats you know all your outside animals because folks this is real it's real hot it may not be real fun but it's real something else and uh you know it's part of living so okay we've got that done see we're we're sewn all the way i'm gonna leave that edge on there for right now until i've come across and i just think i just put my little scissors in the, nope there they are I'm just trimming some strings up so here we go now we have to turn it inside out now I am going to show you with all this extra I am going to trim that corner I'm gonna trim all my corners because you have this is uh, just to 
just to eliminate that bulk in that corner and you can get through it just make sure you don't cut your strings okay and I don't really but let me show you something that I do I use my stiletto I use this side of my stiletto I know growing up when I was learning how to sew I'm gonna show you here turning this when I was learning how to sew we would always just use our scissors the end of our scissors closed up we're gonna push this through here whoops my stilettos wanting to roll away from me here now you can also pull it out the best you can but just having something with a blunt edge you don't want to use something sharp because you may cut or puncture you know your your project and you don't want that so okay let me get my stiletto i have to make sure that little piece stays on because if not that's what i got i got that sharp thing and sometimes i don't want to stay on but okay so just put it there in that corner and and it's rounded too so it you don't get a pokey thing on your oh i got a thread right there i need to trim up okay we're gonna make sure all these oh that one ain't wanting to come out very good it'll probably come out when that pill the pillow is put in oh i see a lot of strings i need to clip on this side let me turn the stiletto this way i don't know if you can see that because i'm i'm looking at it and not okay so we have the pillow done the pillow form done yeah it's not really laying the straightest let's but let's get a pillow in it to see what it looks like okay i've got my pillow and notice i folded one piece back over and i put my pillow in here now when you put the when you fold over the other piece it's going to fill in that corner now see this just ain't the fluffiest pillow so now what i'm going to do is turn this other piece over and i'm going to push that pillow in the corners i'm going to turn it and i'm going to push it in this corner oh i gotta get these strings off of it the back looks really good let's go on and get these corners punched out a little more okay that looks a lot better let me get I know my arms are probably up in the way there but the back looks really nice and there you go we've got a finished pillow so guys what do you think about this we have the pillow finished yes it does look really nice now I don't know if you noticed that I have a it's like a gray linen color and I don't want y'all seeing all that mess over there <laughs> but yeah it, it's actually really nice looking once it's put together all the corners look good I, I still need to trim up some some of the strings I just turned you guys around over here so I could hold this and show it and you can always you know fluff your pillows around but is that not that is pretty that is a pretty pillow it is very nice let me see if we can get all of it in here look at that look at that that is pretty i like that i don't know i may have to try making another one now but now i know 
the instructions you know better oh and i'm sitting here beating all over this mic i'm so sorry y'all y'all are hearing all the the roughness let me get this pulled away a little bit so y'all can see us let me get my my chair turned so i can look at that look at that look 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 i'm so excited i do like the pillow and and the fabric once it's put together on the pillow it's not so bad yeah my little my little dimple there is still there i may put a button there that would be cute to sew a button in there but you know my back is up. oh well no i can't put a button there because i got a pillow form in there that i'm not going to be taking out i mean I, I may be taking out to put on another pillow but yeah so guys that looks really good so if you like my video please feel free to give me a thumbs up um i would love it if you would subscribe i really appreciate you all taking the time out of your day to see what's going on here at my little hobby home um some days it's a crash course in disaster but today this looks like it turned out pretty good um also i would love if you subscribed and if you want to see new content as i upload it hit on that notification bell and you'll receive a notification every time i upload a new video and as always until i see you again have a very blessed day guys y'all have a good one bye